Okay, let's start doing some assembly of this just to kind of uh, get you in the mood uh, for that. So a lot of the assembly that we're going to be doing uh, using the joint, um, we're going to do some rigid constraints to hold these pieces together. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the stack right in here. So I'm going to turn on the visibility of my stack, which we can see back here. Um, you could move these, but I don't think I would. Um, the reason why it's um, kind of grayed out here is because your active component currently is the train body. So if you move it back to train uh, new, now you can actually see that these are two parts. And that's really where you want it, your joints to happen is in your main window here. Um, I'm going to use, the first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to anchor my train body. So I'm going to use right click and hit ground. Now because I moved it, it says do you want to capture the current position or just hit continue? to get to its previous position. I'm gonna say continue and it's gonna bring it back to here. So it is now grounded, so I can't move this piece, but I can move this one. So I'm going to now joint, and again, I'm gonna hit continue rather than capture position. I don't wanna capture a new position every time. Uh, if you notice for my first component, I cannot select the body because it's grounded it won't let me move that component. So whenever you're doing a joint, remember it takes component one and it moves it to component two. So you can't pick component one if it's grounded. Um, so I'm gonna do this right here and it's gonna be the center of this, on this bottom edge. And then I'm gonna find the, the little circle down here and it's gonna be the center of that bottom edge. And I'm gonna joint those two together. And I'm going to say, okay, I don't want to spin it. I don't want it to, you know, move it side to side. I could do all those things, but again, spinning it does nothing because um, it's, it's the same all the way around. I don't want to move it side to side. I don't want to do any of those things. So I'm just going to say, okay. And now that's in position. Those are locked together. Um, so I can't move that now. Um, I now want to put the hitch magnet on. So the hitch magnet is going to go on the back side here. So it's going to, it's going to stick right on the back of this. And then I'm going to put the hitch peg in between those. So use joint, again, the same type of thing. Click on that, click on this outer hole. And see how that put that to the inside? So I'm going to use the flip command to now put it to the outside of there. Say OK. And we can now see that that magnet is sticking out the back. And now I'm going to use the hitch peg see it now, do the same thing. I'm gonna join that little lip right there and it's gonna to go to the outside lip of that one. And again, it's reversed, so I'm gonna use the flip tool to flip it around and say okay. And now you can see we've got the hitch magnet, hitch peg, and the stack on there. Now the other things, the linkage peg and linkage arm, we can't put those on yet because we don't have wheels. Um, as soon as we model the wheels and attach the wheels to that, we can now put those things on um, as needed, but right now this is pretty good. Those are all rigid constraints because they're going to be locked in place. I'd probably end up gluing this together, gluing this into here, so it's not going to be able to move. Now the wheels on the other hand, they're going to be able to rotate. So you're going to have, um, that's going to be a revolute um, constraint for that. So when we get to there, be great at this point if you wanted to you could change the appearance of some of these things so let's say that you wanted your train body um, to be yellow let's say yellow is your favorite color so you can go into paint or you can do even plastic um, you can pick you know you know transparent you can do translucent plastics if you wanted to or I'm just gonna go into glossy paint and um, that yellow looks really not yellow yeah that's not that doesn't okay it looks yellow on this screen it does not look yellow on my screen um, maybe my colors are messed up um, that looks like a pinkish um, peach color um, on on the video it looks pretty good though so it might, must be my monitor colors are messed up um, oh it's on color weakness that's why there we go. We'll just do uh, cinema. Okay, that, that does look yellow now. Um, it was my monitor. Uh, let's change our stack color. So let's throw um, a glossy black 
with our stack. And then, you know, this, I might want this dark gray from the magnet. And then the peg on the back, let's just make that blue. So you can now see, you know, that your piece is coming together uh, in your train. So this is our Hendersonville uh, locomotive. Um, I guess the blue doesn't make sense, but we can change that if we want to. Okay, so that's that's getting started on this guy. Let's uh, let's continue and make some more parts. So again, gonna do a new component. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, turn all these off so I don't see them. And then what are we gonna make next? Let's take a look. Let's make this, this is our axle peg. So this is going to be threaded um, just like the uh, holes were so you could screw this in. Um, I'm gonna make a profile of this and then um, thread the rod and then cut this hexagon out of the top. Um, for this. So that's kind of the, the game plan that I'm going to follow. Um, the other cool thing you could do, actually I'm going to try this. Let's try it. If I mess up, I mess up. You know, that's kind of how, how life is. But you can actually import um, a component. So I'm going to go back out to this level and I'm going to go to insert. And I'm going to insert from McMaster car. So this is pretty cool. You can go in and McMaster Car is, um, is a hardware company. So basically you can find pretty much any fastener you want in McMaster Car. So I can go into screws and bolts and I can get a round headed screw, which is essentially what I'm looking for. So if you look at the picture, this is a round headed screw and it's a hex um, socket here. It's a 530 seconds. Um, hex screw that looks like it's an inch long for that. So I'm going to go in, uh, round head screw. I want a hex drive. Um, it doesn't have a flange. It's not tamper resistant or vibration resistant. So it's not left handed. So I think this is just regular right here. Um, it's a quarter 20. So we can come down here and find our quarter 20 so we you can do it based on that now there's a couple options there's stainless steel and there's this there's fully threaded and it gives us a one inch there we go one inch fully threaded five thirty seconds um, right there so if I click on it um, is that the one I want yep there's a CAD product detail that I can click on and then It'll give me all this stuff, make sure it's right, drive size, all that good stuff. And then this is what we want to enter into our stuff. We don't want to order it. We want to pull it in as a 3D step file. So there's a 3D step with no threads and a 3D step with threads. So we're going to do 3D step with threads. Um, these are just other file types for other 3D modeling programs, but a 3D step file works great for Fusion. So I'm going to hit save. And now you're going to see that here's our component and we're going to say, okay. So we now have that part modeled and threaded um, into our design and you can see it right here. Um, if we turn on our train body, Again, it's, it's kind of hidden. There it is right there. And we can actually do an insert that into there, uh, which we will in a little bit. So anyway, that's how you can import um, a part in from McMaster Car so you don't have to do it. So if you have a threaded fastener or threaded object or even objects um, made by other companies, they typically have their 3D files um, available and you can then just import them into your, your stuff. So I'm going to leave that as this um, and make my component seven something different. So now I can also copy and paste this. So I can um, copy and then I can paste multiple versions of this because again, I'll need four of them, um, but we'll do that when we get closer to, uh, to time. 
So cool, that worked out great. So we didn't actually have to model this at all. Um, pulled it from master car. Let's tackle the wheel. This is uh, this was one that looks challenging. Um, it is fairly challenging, but if you um, do the fillets at the end, it makes it much more manageable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a profile of this. I'm going to revolve that profile. I'm then going to drill a hole there. And then I'm going to draw this shape and cut that, circle pattern that, and then do all my fillets. Then I'm going to draw on this surface a circle, extrude it, draw another circle, extrude it, and then drill a hole into that. So it's kind of the process that I'm going through. So that's really a good thing to think about is like, what is your game plan for creating a part? Um, and really kind of think through that process before you get started is super handy. Um, so if I look at this, um, it gives me a dimension from the center here up to this point, and it gives me a radius. So I know that the distance from the center to the outside edge here is going to be one inch plus an eighth because of the radius that's there. So an inch and an eighth is where I'm going to start. So I've got my component activated. This is going to be my wheel. Um, I'm going to draw, um, uh, it picked a side for me. I'm going to not do that. So I'm going to delete that sketch and do another one. I'm going to draw it on this face because I'm going to revolve this way. So my wheel is kind of in the proper orientation to begin with. Um, no, that's not the face I want to draw on. Sorry about that. Let's try that again. I'm going to draw it in this face, so I'm looking down on it, draw my profile, revolve it, and it will be correct. Okay, so I'm basically just drawing a couple rectangles, um, if you think about it. So the thickness of this, I think, is a quarter of an inch, and we said the total length is going to be 1.125 for this wheel. Let's just check. Yeah, and then we've got this little cutout feature right here. So quarter inch is your thickness. So we're basically just drawing this right here. Um, this little inset, if you notice, starts at, looks like it goes from a quarter of an inch to 0.75 inches. So when I go back to here, I'm gonna draw another rectangle. It's like this, a dimension from here to here is 0.25 and from here to here is 0.75 and this should be halfway. 0.125 I believe. Let's check all that again. So 0.25 is where it starts. Ends at 0.75 away. That looks good. I'm going to revolve that and we'll go from there. So let's, let's see what we get. Let's go back to here, finish sketch, use my revolve tool. I just want this portion of it. And I'm gonna revolve around this axis. There we go. Let's use our fillet tool. I'm gonna fillet this and this, and those are gonna be 0.125. Gets that rounded over. And then let's look at our drawing. So this internal radius here and this radius here are going to be 0 0.063, which looks like 0 0.125 divided by 2 um, is how I'm going to treat that. So I'm going to do a, and that's all of these. So there's, there's a lot of these on the fillet this time. So you've got this one, this one, this one and this one, and this is going to be 0.125 divided by 2 to round all those spaces. Looks good. Let's drill a hole in it. So because our hole is right in the middle, we don't really have to do a new sketch. We just put our hole in there. And let's look at what our hole size is. There we go, 0.28 uh, is our hole. So 
0.28. And you're asking, why is that not 0.25? Well, we want to spin, so it's gonna be a little bit thicker than 0.25. So usually 30 thousandths is a pretty good um, clearance hole that you would use on that. Um, if you're actually doing this in real life um, and you wanted something to spin like this, you would actually make it so you press fit a bearing in there. Um, and then you clamp down on the bearing uh, with the inner race of the bearing um, so that uh, it would do what you want it to do. But that's, that's for another discussion later. So now we're ready to draw our kind of wedge pieces and then circle pattern those. So again, I'm gonna do um, a sketch on the back. I'm gonna do some construction lines to start with. So hit C for circle and then X for construction line. I'm basically gonna make a couple of arcs or circles um, that I can dimension. I believe this one was 0.37 uh, for the radius. So again, I'm gonna do times two. And then I think this was 0.65, let me see. 0 0.37, 0 0.63. So this one, again, a, a radius, 0.63, but then I'm gonna multiply times two for that. Um, and why I do this is I like to lay out kind of my design and then go back with actual lines. Um, so again, I'm still in construction mode. Um, I'm gonna do a line that's up to here, a line that's up to here, and then I'm gonna do a line that's just vertical there. So I put that constraint in and now I'm going to use my symmetry tool to say that this and this have symmetry about this. So now when I move one of them it moves the other and I think it gives me an angle um, on this. So if you notice um, I've got a 30 degree angle um, right here okay for that wedge to be cut out. So that's what I'm going to do do a dimension between here and here and I'm going to make that 30 degrees and now you can see I've got my rough end for this at this point I'm going to use my line tool and I'm going to take it off construction mode and I'm just going to put in these lines and I'm going to do my center point arc I'm going to move the center go from this point to this point do another center point from this point this point. And now I've created um, my fully dimensioned sketch. But again, using those construction lines to get it laid out and then finish your sketch, I'm going to do my extrusion. So again, I'm going to pull it this way, cut it through, uh, which I'll just do a negative 0.25, which probably only has to be point, or, uh, 1, 0.125 um, to actually go all the way through. And then I'm going to do a circle pattern of that. So come down here to your pattern tool, circle pattern. Make sure you pick features. Click on the feature you want to circle pattern. Click on the axis. You can pick on any of these circles. Uh, or you could click on this line for the axis. Any one of those work. And then we want six. And hit OK. And then that creates the pattern. that's it. All right, last thing we need to do is add this little um, place where our linkage arm is going to connect to. So a dimension here is 0.7 from the center of this hole to there. So we're going to use, we're going to draw a sketch um, on this face because we want to extrude from there. So it's going to be 0.7 and then we'll do this extrusion, then the middle extrusion, then we'll do a hole. So three steps um, in this process. So let's spin this around. Uh, let's do a new sketch this face. Um, it's going to go right here along this line. So again, I can do a, um, a construction line. So I can go out this way. Escape. I'm going to make this dimension here, 0.7. And there I have the center of my circle. It's going to go there. So I'm going to use my circle tool, get rid of the construction line using the X. X toggles that. And let me see what the dimension of that is. So it looks like 0 0.25. 0 0.25. Finish the sketch. 
extrude. And I'm going to extrude this way. So it's wanting to cut. So we don't want to do that. We want to do a join. And then let's figure out how far that goes out. It looks like it goes out. Point one two five. Hold on. Maybe point one two five. Because if you look, there's point two five. That looks like the whole thing, and then this is point one two five end there. Um, that doesn't seem tall enough. Maybe that's 0.125 off of the surface of the wheel. That's what I'm going to guess because, or else it's you'll see the issue. So that that detail is not great. I'm going to be honest. So let's if we did this 0.125. Okay, see how that that comes flush with the the wheel. So I don't think that's right. Um, so I think 0.25 might be better. That's going to give you some clearance. Um, so if you notice, you're going to have, because the linkage arm is going to sit right up against there. That gives you a little bit of clearance there. Um, I personally think that this is correct. It's going to be 0.125 off of this face right there. So from here, there's 0.125 plus another 0.125 to give you 0.25. So I think this is correct. This looks right. The detail on that drawing is leave something to be desired for sure. I'm going to create my next sketch on this one. This should be much easier, and it's a circle right in the middle there. This dimension is going to be 0.125. And finish that sketch. This one's going to be extruded by 0.125. And then we're going to cut a hole right in there. So we can use my hole tool. Click on this. It's going to be right in the middle. Snaps to it. This is 0.0625. inch deep. There it is. Get this area right in there. And flat on the bottom. Perfect. Okay. There's my wheel. Again, if you go to visual style and you go to shaded, it looks really nice. It's nice and smooth. Looks good. Pretty happy with that. Now here's the question. Is why is this, why is there a line there when I transition? Let's go back a second hill. Like there's always going to be a line. That looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that, um, the way that came out. Awesome. Wheel done. Okay, um, so now we can attach these to the train body and make copies. So we're going to hit copy, right click on that. Actually, let me save my file first. Right click, copy. Right click on here, and paste. So this is going to put a second wheel, so I'm just going to kind of move that out here. And then I'm going to right click and do paste again. Here. And then right click and paste again. So 
and I have four wheels now. And go back in here. Let's look at this one. So I'm gonna turn these off now. And let's just check this. So there's a paste and a paste new. Um, so if I go back into this wheel, and let's say that I modify, let's modify the um, this extrusion here. And let's just make it like 0.25. So it's clearly bigger. Notice what happened to all my wheels. So see how they all adjusted according to that? So they all have this now longer extrusion. So that's the thing when you hit paste, it'll paste identical copies and if you modify one, it'll modify the rest. If you hit paste new, so let's say that I right click and do a paste new, you'll see that it's called wheel, but it's a wheel one. So it's not like wheel, you know, colon two, three, four. This is now a new name. It's called wheel and then parentheses one. Um, so let me show you the difference here. So I'm gonna bring this one here and hit okay. And now when I go back and edit this one, so I go back to this uh, extrusion here and make this back to 0.125, hit okay. You'll notice that this one does not change. All the rest of them went back to shorter. This one did not. So if you do a paste, you get the same thing. And when you update one, it updates the rest. When you do a paste new, it makes a new component. It's not a copy of the component um, so that you can modify this one separate from this, which comes in really handy if you're doing um, parts and pieces that look very similar to each other, especially like the parametric Legos that we did. You can actually just take the first parametric Lego, do a copy paste new, and now you can make another Lego brick uh, by just changing a couple parameters on that particular part. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one because I don't want it. Um, and now it's gone. Let's go back to our train. Uh, let's turn this one on and make copies of this. So again, same type of thing. I'm gonna copy it, right click, paste, Gonna move it so it's a little bit different. Spacing, paste, and paste. Okay, so again, you can see part one, two, three, and four. Um, they don't all have different names. So same name, and then the designation after the colon is uh, what part it is of those. Let's. Um, Assemble. So we got our train body. We're going to add some of these wheels to the outside edges of this. Now, in real life, is there going to be some spacing between this face and this face, um, the back side of this wheel? Absolutely. Are we going to do that today? No. Um, you could, but not necessary. So we're going to do a revolute this time. We want to revolve. We want this to be able to spin around this uh, hole here. So we're going to use the revolute going to pick on um, our component one. So we're going to select component one. Now we want to be on the other side of this. So if you notice, I'm going to go to the inside here, hold down control so I can grab this back piece there. And then I can go into this circle, hold down control, do the center of that. And now it's going to lock those two together. And again, if you look, see how there's no clearance here? Could you add a clearance you could you could do like a 30 thousandths or 20 thousandths clearance of that actually I might do that I'll do a 20 thousandths clearance okay uh, let's do the same thing um, with the rest of them so joint motion we're still in revolute which is perfect again this is gonna be my uh, component so again get on this inside hold down control Hit the back face, um, find the circle, hold down control, snap that to there. And then we're gonna do this direction, we're gonna do a 0 0.020, hold off 20 thousandths. Let's go to the other side. This is making it easier. Joint, again, this time we can just do this back hole, we're already there. We want this, control, do it there. Now it's the wrong way, so I can use the flip tool. And again, we want to come out uh, this direction, 0 0.020. 
and our last one, joint, pull down control, grab that face, pull down control, let's make grab this face. Perfect, puts it in the right spot. We want to come out this direction, 0 0.020. 0. So now when we look at it, we should be able to see that there's a gap between our wheels. The wheels are aligned. We're now in position there. Now we can put our threaded uh, bolts on here. So these, you could do rigid or you could do, um, I would probably put rigid on these. Um, or Revolute, I'm going to go rigid for the type. Um, again, I'm going to select this lower edge of that to go into this spot right there and lock in. And you can see that it's threaded on the inside there, which is good. I'm going to say okay. Now you're like, why would you not put a gap there? Well, because 20 thousandths is good, if you think about it, it's going to kind of move back and forth between like in that space, so you don't really have to put a gap on that one. I mean, you could, it's not gonna hurt anything, but I'm just not. Uh, next one, again, it doesn't matter where you, you know, where you pick or what you pick. Pick whichever one you want. Put it there, another joint. There, and the last one. Clicking that outer rim, and just go rim, somewhere right there, and click OK. Now, these actually are able to spin, and you're like, well, why is this spinning too? Well, it's because we put it rigid, so it's actually going to spin with it. So technically, should we have made the rigid joint with the other one and then offset that? Yeah, that's probably how we should have done it. So right now, this bolt actually spins with our wheel. You see that? Um, so whenever our wheel revolves, um, our bolt revolves with it. Um, yeah, not the best, but again, it's not it's not a deal breaker. I'm not gonna you know redo. It. You could redo it, and I could go in here to the joint. I could um, edit the joint, and here's what I would do. I'd pick the second component. So I'm going to deselect that. I'm going to actually select this, hold down Control, pick that point that it's going to be on, flip it, and now I'm going to offset it this way. How far? Well, the thickness of this is a quarter of an inch, so 0 0.25, plus the 20 thousandths that we needed to move it. So now, here it is in position. Now when I move this, it doesn't rotate that. So that would be a better joint, actually. Um, I'm not gonna change the other ones. But if you're doing this, I think I'd probably do that so that this spins, this doesn't spin as a result um, of that. Now we can put our linkage arm on here, which is kind of fun. So let's pull a linkage arm, and we're gonna need two of them, so we can do the same thing. We can do a copy of that. We can then paste it. Can move this a little bit. And now we're going to do two joint um, commands. So these are going to be um, Revolute as well. Um, so that these can move. So again, first item um, that I'm going to select is going to be right here in the center. And that's going to go in the center of this thing. Um, kind of to this back edge, so like right there. And there we go. That should be able to revolve. And say OK. And then I'm going to, if you notice, so this one moves now, but now I need to attach it to that one right there. So, same thing, joint. I'm going to continue to where it was. First item is going to be, so this might be a little trickier to get to. So I'm going to hold, grab this surface, hold down control, and you can see that I've got three options here. So I want that back edge, and I want that up against there right there. And I'm going to say, OK. Now, here's kind of the cool thing, is this, these now move together. Pretty fun. Do the same thing on the other side, joint. 
first component would be this guy. Spin it around. So it's in there. Looks good. Uh, next joint. Again, grab this inner surface, hold down control, apply it to that back side. Now we can put our uh, linkage pegs in. So we can now start seeing this coming together. So let's get our linkage peg. Do a joint for it. So again, we'll put that bottom edge there. And if you click on this, and flip it, you'll see that we get our linkage peg to line up Are you going to need some offsets? Yes. Should you have put some offsets in this? Yes. This is not 3D printable um, in its current state. So just FYI. If these are things you want to modify with the train to adjust it so you can 3D print each of these parts and make a train, by all means do it. Um, I think it would be awesome. Um, but again, we want to copy and paste this linkage arm. Paste. Um, let's move. Oops. Let's move this out so we can see it. So we'll go to the other one. Paste. And then we'll do a third one. Okay. So we'll join. There. Now again, you can pick this, and that's fine. It'll put it in the right plot, spot. Um, so we'll spin this around. So we'll mark this guy. We are close. Now, if you notice, it kind of gets a little wonky in here. See that? So we could make another um, constraint that holds this um, parallel with the ground or with the uh, bottom of this, and then that way it stays together. But it's not bad. It'll do. All right, that's the end of this video. Uh, the next video that we do, we'll be doing the cow catcher uh, which is uh, tricky. We're going to use the lock tool to do that, um, but a fun one. Thanks.